Okay, so we get a million and one questions about frogs. And so I thought I would break it down. You know, and a lot of people lump frogs all into one big category. There's actually kind of two categories. There's frogs, you know, like we have here, hollow body frog, usually with a double hook, collapsible. It's got a hollow chamber and usually tassels out the back. And this is a toad. This happens to be a zoom horny toad, uh, mega bass pony gabbit frog. You can see there's a lot of difference there. Um, you know, a toad is more cast it out, reel it in, cover water. It's, it, you know, it, I tell people this is like a subtle buzz bait, a finesse buzz bait almost. It makes a real, you know, subtle plopping sound, ticking sound. These mimic shad amazingly. So while I think it, my personal belief on a hollow bodied frog, it, it mimics bluegill. That's what it's mimicking. I think these do a really great job of mimicking bait fish, you know shad minnows that kind of stuff so um, i'm going to kind of go through some of the different differences and when to throw these different ones and then you know all the differences you have with so many frogs on the market now so you know how do you know which one to pick um, and i'll kind of go through some of the many questions we get and try to answer those as best i can So what I'll say uh, for a frog, um, when I'm going to pick up a frog is when I need an ultra weed weedless lure, um, I need something that can really come through cover and never have a problem getting hung up. A uh, hollow bodied frog is maybe the most weedless lure ever made. The body protects the hooks from getting snagged and then collapses when a fish chomps down on it. So you can throw this over wood, you can throw it up on rocks, you can throw it over grass, it works great in grass. Put it on heavy braid and heavy action rods, you know, big sturdy gear if you need to hoist them out of cover. Um, if you're not fishing around real heavy cover, you can put them on, you know, like a 7-2 medium heavy rod, 7 foot medium heavy rod, and kind of skip it under overhanging trees, underneath docks, um, around other sparse cover. Um, and work it on lighter lines. So, you know, use the heavier gear to get it out of heavy cover. Um, use the, the lighter gear when you're fishing more open water. Um, you know, you've got popping frogs, you've got pointed nose frogs. Of course, the Spro Bronze Eye 65 kind of jump started the market. Dean Rojas made this frog famous and what it could do um, in the summer months, you know, fishing around shallow cover. Um, this frog, you know, so a point and a popper, a pointed nose one, what they're gonna do is they're gonna kinda sit in the water and as you work them, the nose is gonna slap on the water. And that's how it gets its, that's how it gets, how it makes its commotion. So you're gonna, you know, you're gonna kinda work this quick with short rod pops. Whereas with a popping frog, you know, you can, you can walk these frogs, but with a popping frog, you have the option of making it a popper, you know, so you can give it a big chug and make it really you know, push water, gurgle water, make a big bubble, uh, make a big commotion, stay in one area. Um, or you can walk it and it'll, you know, make little small pops back and forth as it walks. So you can cover water with it. Um, it's not quite as efficient as using a, using a toad where you're just straight reeling it out, letting the legs do all the work. Um, but you can cover water with a frog. Um, sizes, that's probably the next big thing we get asked about. And so, you know, you've got your standard size frog. There's, you know, some larger ones coming on the market. That's the Spro Bronze Eye. That's the new Savage Gear frog. Um, great color options, you see. But what we also have is we have these really big oversized frogs. This is the Spro King Daddy. Um, and then we also have these much smaller frogs. And you can see uh, that wide range of sizes. Where I see this does good, like I was fishing on a trip one time and there was three of us in the boat throwing frogs. Two guys in the front are, are walking popper frogs. The guy in the back's throwing the big king daddy and he's getting, he's not getting as many bites as we are. Now he's behind two people that are frog fishing, but every time we would get a bite, it would be like a two, three, four pounder. Every time he got a bite, it would be like a four, five, six pounder. So he didn't get as many bites, but he got a, a much bigger bite. You know, this these kind of frogs make sense to me where there are big bass hunting big forage. So if you live on a lake that has big gizzards, uh, big bluegills, you have 
you know, eight, nine, 10 pound fish, then a, a big frog makes sense. You know, you're targeting a bigger class of fish. You're gonna use a bigger frog. Also makes sense if you're fishing over real heavy cover, uh, this frog will sit down on the mat real hard. You know, so as you work it, it's gonna hit on the mat real hard and kind of draw them up. You know, you want something that puts a little noise on top of that cover and so they can hone in on it and find it up above them, especially if they've got a lot of stuff to go through. So a big frog can also be really good for that. Um, on the flip side, the smaller frog, um, I think these really excel. Um, if you're trying to get people started frog fishing, man, take these little frogs like this, put it on spinning gear with like 10 or 12 pound braid. Dude, they can skip it around anything. They won't get it stuck on anything. These things almost never get stuck. You can skip it under bushes, throw it over grass, fish it around docks. You're not gonna hurt anything. This is a great lure to get kids acclimated to top water fishing. So take these little frogs and do that. Now where they also excel, you've got some of these um, smaller frogs that aren't as small, like this is the new one of the new frogs from Scum Frog, one of their tournament frogs. Smaller profile than most frogs, got a big weight in the back. It actually sits down in the water a little bit more. This smaller frog, these smaller frogs like this can be really good if you're on a fishery where a lot of people are throwing frogs and they're throwing this same kind of profile, same kind of colors. You come in with a smaller, maybe a big color change. Um, but a much smaller profile, you can get a lot more bites than other guys. You can come behind guys and catch them just because you've changed the profile and the way the frog sits in the water. So that's something to consider if you're, you know, you're fishing a lake that's got a lot of frog fishermen, you know, think about changing your profile. Scared me to death, dude. That's a big one too. <laughs> Did you hear that bite? I was That's filming right. on all that. Oh my Good goodness! Whoo! <laughs> <laughs> that gave me a heart attack. What a jump! <laughs> I mean, if that if you don't enjoy that, then just quit. This ain't your deal. Like, <laughs> oh man, that's a chunk. Look at that. So, you know, of course the Zoom horny toad is a staple and uh, Zoom also has this, they have what they call a Zoom frog. It's made out of like this thicker, stretchier material. It's real durable. These things hold up really well. The, the, because of the material being a little bit more durable, these legs kick and make a ton of noise. So this is actually a lot louder than a Zoom horny toad. Um, a ribbit frog is a lot louder than a Zoom horny toad. So you can play with the sound of your frog also. Um, then you've got some of these hybrids. These are Stanley. That's a you know a top toad, uh, popping toad. So these are toads. You can reel them. They've got the legs that kick. You can reel them uh, just on a straight retrieve. But these will also they have air chambers in them, so they can you can stop them and sit them on top of the surface. Whereas if you've got a toad on a pretty good EWG hook, when you stop reeling, it's going to sink down under the water. Well, these two frogs can be a toad and a frog. So I, I kind of like those hybrid in betweens. And again, you know, now we've got companies, this is a toxic baits, uh, wade frog. And this is a giant frog. I mean, you compare this to the original, you know, ribbit, zoom frog, zoom horny toads. I mean, that's a giant profile, but this is made by a company out in California. And th those guys that fish out on the Delta, they fish for 10 pounders. So, I mean, when you're targeting 10 pound fish, changing your size to these big size, I mean, this thing makes a ton of commotion, makes a lot of noise attracts big fish I mean, it's a neat option to have i mean it's just like throwing big swim baits for big fish out there out west you know i see this working in places that you know texas california uh, down on gunnersville down on chickamauga places that got really big fish that you've got grass to work these around i mean i think that's going to be a cool option on a trip earlier in arkansas this year we found that you know the toads and the frogs were both working and they worked at different times um, we also found that the color kind of mattered where we threw a black one for a while and we get, you know, one bite for every, you know, 10 we were getting on a white one. So we kind of figured out they were chasing around bait fish, looking for things that were white in the water. Um, so we switched to that white. And the first day the toad was real hot. We get, we get bites right up against the bank, fishing it around cover over wood, um, on bank grass and things like that. But then the second day they didn't bite the toad as good. We switched to the frog. 
stayed closer to the bank, worked it around that cover that was right up against the bank, or you know, isolated pieces of cover out away from the bank and, and caught better fish by switching to the frog. So I, I definitely wouldn't say that one works better than the other all the time. It's kind of a let the fish in the cover dictate which one you're gonna throw. The last thing I would talk about is, is colors. Um, obviously, I think a lot of people think a frog is imitating frogs, and that's not what it's doing. What, what I believe it's doing is it's imitating bait fish around whatever cover. Um, a frog is obviously a, a profile that, that looks natural to a fish, but I mean, you know, you, you put a color like this is the one of the new 13 fishing frogs. You know, it's got tinsel in the legs. It's got this silver shad bars, silver and white and gray. I mean, it looks like a shad. You're mimicking a shad. And I, I think a frog and a toad, they make sounds like a shad makes. You, you see the shad behind us flipping. You, you know, that flicking, 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 those tail flicks, you know, that's a real light, subtle sound. I think a frog sounds a lot like that. So, you know, I've gotten over the years where now I kind of, I mimic more bluegill and shad. That's what I'm trying to mimic. So, you know, color selection for me seems to, seems to go around that. You know, if I'm in darker water, um, dark conditions, I might use a dark frog. I just think they can see that profile better when they're looking up. Um, so I like that, you know, if I'm, if I'm around bluegill, you know, I want a, want a couple of nice bluegill profiles. That's a, that's the Savage gear. They've got really pretty bluegill patterns. Um, and then, you know, that's the original Spro, um, one of the, sh the Shad versions they have, and that's in a beautiful red ear pattern. That's one of my fav all time favorite colors um, that, that Spro's ever made for a frog. So, um, but I love those bluegill hues. I love the shad hues. That's that's usually what I stick with a lot. And like I say, if I've got dark conditions, dark water, I'll change to a, a darker color. But so I, you know, I kind of go with in the fall. Uh, a lot of times, if I'm on a lake where I'm not fishing a lot of grass, I'm fishing these shad profiles. That's what I want to mimic. I'm mimicking shad up everywhere, you know, wherever I can around cover. I'm throwing the frog because it's so weedless. I can fish it in wood. I can fish it over grass. I can throw it right in the cover and get in the heart of it, you know, and get at the fish. So um, just because I'm throwing a frog doesn't mean I'm necessarily mimicking a frog. So I think, you know, if you think about profile, you think about size, you think about the weight of the frog, um, you know, your cadence with how you work it and then your color selection, you can mimic a lot of things that are in the water. So don't just narrow yourself to thinking I'm throwing a frog, I'm trying to trick a fish into eating a frog. You know, they sound like shad, they look like shad, they can sound like bluegill, look like bluegill. So I think a frog is an extremely versatile lure that people try to pigeonhole into a little thing. You know, I'll, I've got grass, I'm going to throw a frog. Well, no, I mean, you can catch them around boat docks, you catch them on riprap wood whatever open banks i mean the, the, these narrower frogs they walk so good you know like that's the the strike king uh popping perch that frog walks amazing you know you can skip it up under a walkway where you see a bunch of bluegills walk it out of there keep it in its area and, i mean it's just that's a fish catcher that's one of the ones i've latched onto the last couple of years uh that todd castledine made for them it just it's caught me a lot of fish and so i have a lot of confidence in it but i will change up uh, you know i think if i if i go to a place where i think a lot of people are throwing this bait then i'm going to try to throw something different different color different size different profile you know different sound so i, mean, I think if you consider all of those things um, you can do a lot more you can fish a frog a lot longer you know obviously the fall is my favorite time to fish it but i mean it works all through the summer it's really good in the spring I know when I'm sight fishing, I'll take a frog and go down the bank and that, you know, so I'm looking for beds, but I'm also throwing way up ahead and you catch a ton of fish on a frog while you're sight fishing, looking for shallow spawning fish. So don't just limit yourself to thinking it's something that you're gonna fish in grass. Um, it can do a lot more for that if you let it. You know, the toad's great for covering open water, um, sparse cover. The frog's great for working in small confined areas. Um, making a lot of commotion, but staying in an area where the bass can hone in on, especially if he's having to find it up through a dense maze of cover. And a frog with a pointed nose, you know, it, it will work better in heavy cover. Um, so that, you know, the popper frogs, they work better in open water, whereas the pointed nose works better in heavy cover. It'll just come through grass, come through matted vegetation better. Um, even around wood, the pointed nose seems to do a little better where that Popping mouth is better in open water where you're, walk, you're walking it, you're working it and popping it. Um, you know, that's a, that's a better option for open water.